Okay, ladies, welcome. I'm so excited to be here. A lot has been going on in my life with the wildfires in Oregon the way they are. Actually, as some of you know, most of you know, there's wildfires all over the West Coast. Um, it's really intense. Um, speaking of that, I decided to do my video today at 11 and now the yard guy is outside. So if you hear some loud roaring and rah, um, then that's that. So we're just gonna let it be. Um, and it's funny that this comes up because this is something that I wanted to talk about is that when you have deeply buried trauma, there are certain things that cause trauma responses. So for example, in the trauma work that I've done, when I was younger or before I have done all this work, if something like this happened and I created a video that I was going to speak from 11 to 11.30 Pacific time and a yard work guy came up and there was mowing or something going on, my trauma response would have said, see, this always happens, why? And my heart would have, rate would have rose and I would have gotten in a state, right? So it's, it's really everything around us is an opportunity to see either where we have buried trauma, where we have nervousness or stress and how we can help ourselves and support ourselves as that comes up to breathe into the moment in any given moment not just when we are in meditation and feel like everything around us is fine when things come up where it's like tumultuous and oh my gosh how do we ground ourselves in the now and breathe into everything's okay right so welcome everybody my name is Erin Gallagher my business is Air Inspirational I support people through trauma I support people through breaking through blocks in their lives and their business to create big money big love um, big connection in their lives and really to make it the impact they're here to make so I'm here to support you in making that impact you're here to make so Usually I come on here, as you guys know, um, and I do Akashic Records readings. I'm an Akashic Records master, so I really use the Akashic Records to support people in removing, deleting blockages, and um, actually seeing trauma and where it's rooted in, where it's rooted from, and how to release that, relieve it, right? So in this work, there are a number of different things. There is really um, getting deep within and, and finding safety in the body, and there's also discovering and acknowledging what these blocks are such that we can breathe through them and release them. So most of what I do and what trauma release is in general is just to acknowledge it, right? Just to know it's okay, it's here. So I'll give you a little background about this video. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, the West Coast is pretty much all on fire. I think it's getting a little bit better than it was um, last week. We evacuated my home, uh, me and my roommate, on Monday, last Monday, and have been um, in this wonderful, beautiful woman, our friend Cindy's home, um, about 45 minutes east of us in Salem, or are we east of it? it, it I'm terrible with uh, relational distance, but we are about 45 minutes from our home and we are evacuated. And um, I already had this video scheduled before the fires. And my first thought was, oh gosh, I have to, I have to cancel it. I have to cancel all of my appointments. I have to cancel everything. And I thought, you know what, this is actually a really great opportunity to show up for these women and to express what to do in a moment of trauma and how to support yourself through it when it's actually happening. Um, because, you know, you can't just stop working and stop doing everything. You can for a little bit, of course. And for, for us, like insurance will cover certain things. But at the same time, my work is supporting people through trauma and through these things that happen. So I thought, oh, what better way than to model and to live in the now and to live in the, um, to practice what I preach, right? Which is to show up in safety in my body even in crazy tumultuous times, like not only was my house almost on fire, I'll tell you guys the miraculous story in a bit, but also moments like these where there's this like the lawn guys outside. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's really loud right outside the window. Um, and what I was saying earlier about that is how to keep your cool, how to keep your calm in the moment, like I am doing, um, barely, in order to keep going, right? And to keep finding that safety in the body, no matter what is going on externally. So I wrote some notes over here. So if you see me looking off to the side, it's because I wrote down some notes because this is some really important information and we only have half an hour. So I want to get through it. Okay. Um, so I want to read a little bit of what I said in the, uh, description of the live such that I can get like 
and I like such that I can just lay it down and outline it, right? So I almost lost my home in the Oregon wildfires, which for us, we were evacuated Monday and we self evacuated. Um, and this is my first time going live since that time. In this video, I will tell you how, is, how I was able to process this trauma and still run my business in a healthy way, while at the same time honoring my mind, body, and soul. So what I did right following the tragedy was to not only evacuate to this home, but to take a full week off. So it's really important to take that time and no one to take that time. And I know a lot of internally, my first thought was, yes, I get to take time off and I still have to run a business and make money because especially at this time, I don't know where my money's coming from. I'm kind of living in this other person's house. There's a whole lot going on and I'm not sure. I'm like I said, I just set up my iPad willy nilly in this bedroom. And so, um, it's really about keeping structure. That's the first thing I want to talk about. When you're in a traumatic response and something is happening, think about how you find safety in your body. For me, structure and discipline and schedule keeps me going. This is my schedule for today, okay? So I have all of my things today live in Women Helping Women, right? Every day what I'm going to do and then my to-dos here. This is my saving grace because this supports me in creating, okay, even though I'm in someone else's house, I'm not in my own house, it was almost burned. Literally everything around my house was burned to the ground except for my home. And so I have been sitting in the miraculous nature of that this whole week and processing that. So not only am I still structuring, but I took a full week off to really, and I would suggest taking off as much time as you need for a, strategy, for, for a tragedy, tragedy like this and knowing, and not just catastrophe like I went through, like a you know big, huge thing like a fire, um, but just childhood trauma, anything you experience day to day. And we'll talk a little bit about what kind of trauma I'm gonna talk about today, okay? So how to honor yourself in the process and how to create that safety in your body. And for me, it's that schedule. So as I schedule and I keep working, it supports me and not only supporting myself, but others. And by doing that, I'm supporting them, they're supporting me, right? So it's really, really important to do that. Um, um, so, uh, the types of trauma I'm going to talk about. So of course, because I'm deep in the natural catastrophe right now of, of a fire, um, fires, earthquakes, tornadoes, volcanic eruptions, violent storms. The result of things like these are flashbacks, scary dreams, remembering every single moment of what happened and what you may or may not have done right or wrong. Okay. So for me, like when I evacuated, it's like, now I'm looking back going, I should have grabbed this, or I should have grabbed that, or I should have called this person or what I could should have done. And I will have flashbacks to that time. And this, you know, flashbacks, if we're talking about any kind of flashback or something like that, we're talking about also military PTSD, um, roadside bombs, anything like that. So, um, I didn't go through anything like that, but, and that's what I'll talk about in a second, that there's no form of trauma that's any better or worse than anyone else, right? Your mom yelling at you when you were three years old and creating a trauma response within you is just as important as being in the military in Afghanistan and getting blown up by a roadside bomb, okay? It's just as prevalent. It's just as traumatic in the body. So honoring that and acknowledging that is really important, really important. It's the number one importance when you're dealing with trauma, right? So, um, so I will keep having flashbacks and remembering that time. And like, for instance, we went back into the house yesterday. We're not able to go back for good because there's still the national guard there and stuff going through our stuff. But, um, I was able to get some things and like, this is the jacket that I always wore and we got this and it has, if you smell deeply in it, you can smell like this deep wildfire smell. And I just keep having these, I, I wasn't there when the house like had fire around it, but I just keep imagining our house with all these huge like fires around it. And it's scary, right? It's scary. It's like, how did our house survive? And all my stuff just sat in there, like sucking in all this smoke. And like, what was that like? What was that like for the animals around? What was that like for where some people lost their houses? Some people didn't. A lot of people that kept their houses, like myself, we have a little bit of survival skill. Like how do I still have my house? And the person right next door to me doesn't. So there's a lot, and, and again, this isn't just about natural catastrophes. I'm gonna go on because there's other trauma we're talking about, but this for me is prevalent right now. And really how I deal with this trauma might be the same way that someone else deals with uh, generational or ancestral trauma, such as my parents or my grand -grand grandparents or my great grandparents were in the Great Depression. They dealt with poverty and scarcity. That has repeated into my life and now I'm dealing with poverty and scarcity. That's the thing about the work I do in the Akashic Records is that I'm able to tap into what the root of the trauma was. So the original wound. 
So it could have come from past lives. It could have come from childhood. It could have come from any other thing. Now, a lot of times, and and I'm going to interrupt myself because a lot of times I'll go into your Akashic records and I will see something that doesn't make sense. For example, you'll say, how come I haven't been able to find a partnership? I've been trying to find a partner, a a lover, my king, my queen, whatever it is, and I can't. Like, what's going on? I keep having a block. And your Akashic records might say, you need to heal your relationship with God. And before, when I didn't really know what I was doing that much, I would want to say that and I would be like, I don't know that the person is going to understand that and I don't even understand it. Now I understand from doing years of this work that blocks are blocks are blocks. And it's the same, it doesn't matter like what the thing is. It doesn't have to be in the same subject matter. It can just be a block that is blocking you from that and it doesn't have to relate to one another. So I always say when people work to me, belief is optional. Right? You don't have to believe or understand with your brain what the block is, but you have to be willing to acknowledge it and sit in safety in your body and say, whatever it is, I'm here for it. Whatever it is, I'm acknowledging it. Whatever it is, I'm sitting with the pain and discomfort in my body such that I can move through it in a loving and honorable way, honoring my body. It's so important. Um, I'm doing trauma certification right now. So I've been working with people through their trauma for many years, but right now I'm in Uh, like traditional certification program to become trauma certified coach. And in doing this work, it's, you know, 90% of it is just acknowledging the trauma and being heard and witnessed and seen in that. And so just being allowed to say your feelings, process your feelings and have someone receive that and just say, yes, I'm here for that. I can, and, and I'm, Ooh, it's 11, 11 right now. I just stopped. I just felt stopped for some reason. I was like, why am I stopped? And I look up at my clock, 11, 11. Take a little moment of 11, 11 silence. <laughs> um, so it's very important to acknowledge it, right? So the next tra- type of trauma we're going to be talking about is childhood trauma. So childhood trauma may be neglect or abandonment. This doesn't have to mean your parents left you or I was adopted. It can just mean I wanted that toy one time and my mom was like, get away. And then all of a sudden that c- created a tra- traumatic response of they don't love me. It doesn't mean your parents didn't love you. It doesn't mean you were neglected, like you were thrown on the side of the road. And like, this is where I'm saying trauma, no trauma is better or worse or less or more than another. Okay, because how you perceive the trauma and how it got stuck or frozen in your body is everything. And it's, it's, it's neutral. It doesn't have to, it doesn't, it's not better or worse, like I said, than anything else. So really, really taking that time to acknowledge it, whether it was something that feels like, and, and valuing yourself so much that whatever happened and however you process it in the moment was the right way and how you continue to process it or whether it keeps showing up and recycling which we'll talk about in a second because trauma will do that trauma recycles it's important for us to um see that pattern and instead of being like god damn it there's that pattern again once again Um, and what's, what that is called that kind of poor me. And like, once again, this always happens to me is this trauma response of learned helplessness. We have learned whether from generations past or our parents that we are helpless in any given moment. And what, once again, we can't do it. So all we really have to do is go to the original trauma or look at the trauma as it is, talk it out, speak it out, be heard, be witnessed, be seen, but also to be willing to let it go. And to be willing to let it stay there as long as it needs to stay there in order to feel safe and loved and then be able to be released. Okay. And you are going to have times of like, holy shit, F this. I hate this. Get out of me. Leave me alone. Why does this keep happening over and over? It's okay to be angry and it's okay to yell and it's okay to scream. Sometimes I will, a lot of times I will just go into my car and just scream. I'm talking blood curdling, like from the depths of my freaking stomach. Just let it out because that rage, that unprocessed trauma inside your body needs to get out. So a lot of times we'll process it through sounds, through crying, through deep breath work, right? Through meditation, through talking to someone and just having them witness us in our shit. Okay. Um, So childhood trauma, neglect, abandonment, living in fear, growing up in a chaotic environment. That was my type of childhood trauma is that I grew up in a very chaotic environment. So anything that creates, and, and this is why structure makes me feel safe. Because when I have structure and everything is just so, then I feel better, right? But you have to be careful when you're doing that, not careful in a be careful kind of way, but you know, you have to be diligent that if this thing keeps you safe or working all the time keeps you safe, that you don't become addicted to that. 
okay because that's just replacing one thing with another so yes I use structure to support me in creating but if the structure gets blown out and I can't do any of this today it's okay and it took me a long time to be able to do that because if one thing would go off 15 minutes I'd be like my whole day is fucked like uh, uh, that's it because of my trauma responses based in the chaos of my childhood so it's really important to a acknowledge that create safety in the body and just say it's okay it's okay and to be heard and to be and getting help getting support getting an accountability buddy a friend someone to listen and witness and support you during trauma is going to be really important it's like 90% of this okay um, so uh, yes so the chaotic environment of a childhood even just the stress of getting yelled at by your mom one time like anything can cause trauma right we all have trauma in our bodies so we all have it it's not just one it's not just people that go through something tragic it's everybody right um, so the result of all of this is neglecting and abandoning yourself because even though we grew up in chaos or we had a childhood that was like all over the place we that that made us feel safe because we're used to it and it's the thing that oh I grew up in this so this is just becomes my life now this is my life now right and as you get older and let's say you meet someone and they're serene a serene type of person and you have this partnership that's great and everything's going good you may like try to cre keep creating that chaos in your life in order to feel that safety that childhood gave you even though it isn't actually safe it feels that way because you're used to it right so understanding understanding those patterns is what I do as the work I do I support you in understanding where those patterns came from what they're there for how they can support you a lot of times all we do is see those patterns and say I can't believe they're there I want them gone but the more that we resist and the more that we try to put push that stuff out the more that it's going to to come back to us so it's really important that we speak to that and we love ourselves through it okay um, the result of all of this like I said neglecting and abandoning yourself also playing small and having visibility wounds and afraid of being seen sometimes when you've experienced childhood trauma you're afraid of being seen you play small because if you play big then that's taking a risk right your subconscious is here and there the highest let's say the most amount of money you've ever had the highest you've ever the happiest you've ever been or the least amount of money you've ever had and the worst you've ever been is right here if you ever show signs of going below that or above that so let's say you want to invest in yourself and you want to and, and you want to support yourself and do all this if you've never spent that much money if you've never um, supported yourself in that way and released that trauma your body your mind your soul is going to try to keep you in that space right it's going to do whatever it can to keep you down there so you stay safe so know that that's your body and your soul's way of trying to keep you safe it's not trying to hold you down it's trying, not trying to hold you back it's not trying to keep your business from making money because what that results in is your business doesn't make money you don't understand why it's happening you are afraid to push to go live you um, every time you try to promote something you come off as like buy it buy it buy it and you're just so um, you may just get so obsessed with like selling and needing money that the scarcity and poverty thing just keeps coming back and that's unhealthy because you're replaying these these unhealthy scarcity stories and people can feel that in their energy and they run away even if you're really good at lying or faking like I was really good at faking that like oh my trauma's gone and I'm fine for a lot of years and I was but I was still in the go 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 get them I gotta get I gotta get that sale I need that person to accept me I need that person to buy from me because buy from me means I am a value and so when people are buying from me that means I am a value to them so I need to keep keep that going to make it feel like I'm valuable so that's why this work is very important because not only are you supporting yourself and knowing that you are valuable you are um, supporting other people by you knowing you're vulnerable people will want what you have people will want to buy what you have so that's the work I do is I support you in creating that connection in yourself that safety in your body such that you can release all those scarcity and poverty vibrations and make more money okay so all of these things all of these things are connected and in doing the work I do I like I said I open your Akashic records and I can see all of the things that are blocking you I can do stress and release and I can release all the blocks not saying that I'm gonna come in and release all your blocks and all your trauma in one session it takes time right but the first 90 minute session that I do is amazing because we do strategy work we do release and I tell you all of the things that are blocking you and we it's a discovery process right we excavate we discover we release and clear what we can and then we create the safety in the body for the now and then I like to lead people into three months or six months of working together depending on your level of trauma and what you've been through because it's really important that you have that safe space for a number of months to be able to work through that so I have all those plans and packages if you're interested I have links in the description of a 90 minute session with me it's my signature session and that's where I really go deep in connecting and seeing what's blocking you and what's coming up and what traumas may or may not be associated with that 
and how to move through those with safety and love and also create more money and time and space and connection in relationships with people in your life. Okay. So, um, if you're interested in that book, um, using the link in the description. Okay. So we'll also, I'm also talking about generational and ancestral trauma. So this is a perfect segue because in our bloodline, we have war, we have Holocaust, we have destruction, we have um, bombing and civil war and all of these things. And we have, um, patterns of scarcity. We have patterns of poverty. We have patterns of never having enough because let's say our great, great, great grandparents were, um, in the war or our great, great grandparents were in the great depression and they had to like save every penny and wear the same clothes over and over and over and over. You may notice that your grandparents or your great grandparents wear the same clothes and stuff like that. I mean like the same shirt over and over until it's literally falling off their body. It's because they're so used to living in a time when like I needed to save every penny. And that goes through our blood, through our DNA to us. And there are patterns within us ancestrally that we don't even realize are happening because of our bloodlines. So that's another thing I can do in the Akashic Records is that we open up ancestral stuff, see what the generational things are and release as much as we can. Like I said, sometimes it takes time. It's not like I can do all of this in 90 minutes, but we do a lot in 90 minutes. But um, it's important to see like where it's coming from. Find out and uncover the original wound so that we can be heard and witnessed so that we can be in the now and be present and acknowledge and honor that trauma and also work toward releasing it. Okay. Um, So the next one is also being in an unhealthy relationship. There are some people who are living day to day in an unhealthy relationship with a spouse, people that are living day to day in the same home as someone who is causing them trauma daily. So it's really important to know how to keep yourself feeling safe every day. This isn't to say I'm not trying to, I don't want to uh, recommend staying in the same home with someone that's causing you trauma over and over, but sometimes you're in a situation where it takes time for you to separate from that person, right? So I don't judge anyone's individual um, situation. Like for example, my parents have been divorced for years, but they still live together because they, they're now so codependent and they've been together for so long that they can't separate. And, and my mom like has an addiction to need my dad needing her. And my dad has an addiction to my mom needing. It's just, that's what happens. And instead of judging and saying like, Oh, you should leave or this or that. Sometimes things are the way they are for the, for a reason. And so it's really important to honor that. But to also, you know, like I said, I don't want to recommend staying in a relationship or staying in a household where there's any kind of abuse or any kind of emotional trauma. Um, But at the same time, I don't know anyone's situation. But this is another type of trauma that comes up, right? So what I wrote is this could be anything from living with someone that you're in an unhealthy relationship with, facing the same trauma every day, which is the same as childhood. So let's say we were in um, a relationship with our parents where we were faced with chaos every day. And then we found a partner because that was safety to us that creates chaos in our lives every day. So that's really important to see those connections and we don't judge ourselves for them. We just say, okay, now I know people always, there's that funny thing. Knowing is half the battle. No, knowing is like 90% of the battle. Okay. Knowing and being and acknowledging and understanding where something is rooted in and why we have this process of safety that keeps us maybe stuck or in the same cycle is really, really important. And being seen in that is even more important, right? So, um, also going through a divorce or taking care of aging parents. So you may be taking care of aging parents. You may be in the same home with them. You may be hearing the same things from your parents every day that you did when you were a child. This is just perpetuating the same trauma that you did when you were a child to keep you safe, right? And it's okay. It's just really about knowing that it's wor- you're working through it as you go, okay? Um, so also I see people commenting. Thank you so much for commenting. I'm gonna go back later and respond to the comments because I love you so much. But since I only have half an hour, I'm like, I wanna get through everything, but I want so badly to interact with everyone. Uh, while I'm saying that, I have a community called Awaken Your Spirit. It's all about this type of work. I do live videos in there all the time. Well, not lately because the tragedy I was just in, but um, I do live videos in there all the time. Free webinars, free courses. It's a community for you to go in and be in with people that are dealing with the same things that I'm talking about right now, to be heard, to be seen, to create maybe an accountability group with other people in that group. Okay, so the group is called Awaken Your Spirit, and that link is also in the description. So please join that group. I would love to have more and more of you guys in there. Um, I love seeing your Facebook and knowing that I have people from women helping women in there, I think it's really important for us to stick together. And that's another thing I'm going to talk about is getting help, getting support. And again, if you'd like to book a 90 minute session with me, that's my signature session. I'm able to open your Akashic records, tap in with your master level guides in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth dimensions, all up, all up through, um, your highest chakras and everything 
that connects you to your truth and I'm able to see what's blocking you to see the trauma and the original wound and how to support you in releasing that and connecting with your true self in that way so that you can create so that you can be visible so that you can make money and all of those things so if you are interested in that please book using the link above okay um so oh hi Christina Christina's here that's so awesome Christina women helping women yay let's give a little woo woo for Christina hi welcome um so yeah so the so the last that's the last trauma I wanted to mention is being in an unhealthy relationship so like I said before and this is the most important part that no trauma is better or worse than another if a type of trauma hurts you it hurts you right so if just like me being with the fires, so Christina said prayers for you, Aaron, and everyone affected by the fires. Thank you, everyone. Let's do a little prayers up for everyone affected by the fires in Oregon, Washington, California, and beyond. It's it, it's been really tragic and hard. And for us in Oregon, it was the Mary, it was Marion County because I lived in Gates. It's a tiny little town, tiny little community, and everyone around us just the fires went down the down the hill and all the way through. So um, you know this fire that I just experienced. Um, someone having their mom yell at them at three years old that gave them a trauma response. It's just the same. And I'm not saying that a fire is the same as your mom yelling at you. No, what I mean is the trauma that gets frozen in your body is just as um, important to acknowledge, right? It's just as important. So I, I worked with, I used to work with a lot of people that were afraid to go to group therapy because they were like, oh, I don't want to, you know, just go in there because my, like I had a thing with my mom yelling at me. There's like veterans in there with, uh, traumatic brain injuries like their trauma is more important than mine and I'm like no it's all the same we're experiencing trauma frozen in our body it's important for us to acknowledge it right so um so if it hurts you it hurts you acknowledge that pain value yourself enough to know that you are important you are a value you get to be seen you get to be held so important okay um so acknowledging the daily pain and discomfort in a safe and loving way without dissociating the way to do that is to really get quiet with yourself. And I know that's sometimes hard when you've dealt with trauma. We like it's hard for us, especially if we lived in chaos to get quiet, but really finding the time to put our hand on our heart and our hand on our belly and saying, OK, I don't feel like I am maybe connected to my body 100 percent or that I know what's going on, but I am here. I am here and I'm willing to start here and just being with yourself in that. So important. OK. Um, when to take breaks and when to work. If you're feeling overwhelmed and everything's going like crazy, it is time to take a break. Remember, it takes the time that it takes to work through trauma. It's a process. Things will keep coming back and affect you like they did the first time. Or sometimes, like I said, I'll have flashbacks about something and it'll affect me like it did the first time, even though I've been processing this work for like 17 plus years. Okay, so um, it's be patient. It's a process. Love yourself through it, right? Um trust that you are supported. So know that even if there is tumultuous everything going on in your life that you are supported, you are loved. And reaching out for help is so important. Okay, making sure you either have a therapist, someone like me, a healer that supports you. I have 3 and 6 month programs. I also have my 90 minute session. You can start there just to get a really good like hold on and release what's there in the forefront such that you can like start to move toward healing. Okay? Um, if you don't have the money to invest, you can create an accountability group. You can reach out to people in your family that you want support from. You can go in groups like this and create posts and create and groups like mine. So my, the link for my group is in this as well. So, or is in the description of this video. So going to a group like mine, going to community, peer communities, um, right now because of COVID, there's not a lot of group things you can do, but um, doing Zoom meetings, anything where you have someone, even one person, let's say you have one person that you understand, that understands you, that you met somewhere that you just, I don't know, we have the same vibration and they get me. Create a call with this person once a week so that you have someone to hear you and that you can hear them. Just, just have 10 minutes each time. They can speak 10 minutes. You speak 10 minutes. Then you have time to talk about whatever you want to talk about. That's it. Do that every week. That will really, really support you. Like I said, if you don't have the time or money or energy right now to be investing in a program or a package. Um, I'm already at half an hour. I wish I could go on. I have a few other things, but I think I got the most of everything. But if you have any questions, um, please, 
I usually don't take friend requests or private messages, but just because sometimes I get like a lot all at once. But if you join my group, that's going to be the best way to interact with me or book a session with me for the integration bundle. If you're interested in working and doing three or six month packages, please let me know if, if you are dealing with a lot of trauma and it's affecting your business, then I can really, really help you in clearing out everything that's holding you back, all of the blocks and everything, using the Akashic Records and my strategy and skills from dealing with this type of trauma for 20 plus years. Okay. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. It's been a joy, a joy to support you. I love you all so much and I'll talk to you next time. Bye guys.